to this point, it's another segment of Riding with Wick Rick. This is gonna be a little hot and heavy, uh, but it is what it is. You know the routine. If you like what you hear, hit the like button, share, subscribe. If you believe in the work that we do at the Odyssey Project, the Black Voice and all other subsidiaries of the community work that I've been doing for over 30 years, look in the description box and uh, determine which way that you want to support us. We definitely need your support more than ever. Uh, go over to the site and look at some of the updated uh, material that we're doing right now uh, to sort of shed light on many of the enigmatic issues that I've written on, lectured on, put in my books, um, put in my programs for years. We're gonna be tackling that in a major way uh, as we move uh, into 2024. Something has to change. So I'm telling you now, what I'm probably going to say is going to tick off a lot of uh, quote unquote Christians uh, because I am up to the brim uh, with the BS uh, those who don't know, uh, I am a former minister, actually a leader in the church, uh, once held the title of bishop. Uh, one of my doctorates is actually in theology, uh, so I'm no stranger to church, grew up in the church. I mean, literally grew up in that freaking church. I was there every day. My great-grandparents had me at church so much, I thought we lived there. And the more uh, that I discovered and learned about God and about uh, how a lot of doctrine was being misinterpreted, mis misrepresented, uh, ill presented to the people. I began to approach other leaders in the church to talk about uh, what needed to be done. And I warned them, what, 20 years ago, that the information age was gonna expose a lot of stuff and we were gonna have a mass exodus from the church. They didn't wanna listen. Uh, matter of fact, they told me I was messing with their money and they threatened to kill me. Um, I decided that I would do my work in the community and I would do my work much in the way that the historical figure of Christ did it. Hey, go out there and get with the people, help the people. Uh, we spend way too much time entertaining ourselves inside of churches, but that don't let me get started on that's a whole nother thing. I am just flabbergasted at the fact that a large number of black quote unquote Christians are, I mean, I mean, going for all the smoke when it comes to Pastor White Todd's, Pastor Mike Todd's wife, Pastor Mike and his wife, I guess, were on a vacation somewhere, maybe a cruise or somewhere like that. And she had on this nice little uh, white halter top thing with the, you know, fitted skirt and everything like that. And I can't believe everybody's losing their mind. This isn't that I'm saying people can't have an opinion. You have an opinion of what you think is tasteful for certain people. That's your opinion. That's based off of your upbringing. That's based off of your background. And depending on which schism of the quote unquote Protestant church that you're a part of, because what's acceptable in the Baptist church is not acceptable in the holiness church. What's acceptable in the new denominational church is not accepted in any other church. And you can just go all around all this stuff of what it is, and it's not based on biblical identification or doctrine. It's based off of cultural nuances and what is, you know, if it's not all the way down to your ankles, holiness is not acceptable. Well, you know, everybody has a thing. So here, it's not about your opinion. Take your thing, do your thing, call your thing. Here's my problem. The vitriol and the level of anger and some of the nasty comments that were forwarded to me uh, aimed at a person, you know, and again, I'm not going out unless it's a personal friend of mine. I'm not going out and defending anybody because of what they are doing the church. Because like I said, being the church have been at odds and going back and forth because I've called a spade a spade. And I see that the church is a major part of the issues that are plaguing the black community. <laughs> And I've chronicled them. I've literally written on them and I've spoken on them. And it's not anything to say, hey, man, my love for God and my, the love for my people are paramount to me. I love God. I love my people. So, and it's like that. So it's not a shot at God. It's not a shot at Christ. It's a shot at the religion and the religious zealous, uh, zealous, 
uh, zealot uh, behavior and the attacks. Here's the problem I have. You going after Pastor Mike because his and his wife because of a dress she wore. Joe Biden lay an all kind of pipe to the black community. Has been doing it for 40 freaking years. Not a word. Quiet in a mosquito pissing on cotton. We getting screwed uh, in our neighborhoods, in our schools. Our children are suffering at, at, at an astronomical level in the areas of mental health, mental illness, depression. Our young girls from ages five to 13 lead the statistical category in suicide, not suicide attempt, successful suicides. More little black girls are killing themselves than any other ethnic or racial group in America at between the ages of five and 13. Our men between the ages of 14 and 24 had a 49% spike in suicide over the last six years. I can go on and on about car incarceration, uh, serial force displacement. All this stuff is happening and nobody's mad enough to do a jack about it. But you want to counsel, go out, pull, I mean, drag and I mean, act a purity nut because of a dress this woman wore. I'm not saying the dress is appropriate. I'm not saying it's not appropriate. Y'all figure that stuff out. But I know one thing. Nobody's going to tell me and my wife what we can't do on our vacation. And if we're doing something you don't like, fire us. But that's, I mean, my whole thing is this whole idea of holiness, this whole idea of being holy and being righteous and giving you a pedestal or a platform of perfection on which to look down and judge people somehow totally escapes the responsibility to the community that rests underneath you, that is looking to you. The people are not for the church. The church is for the people. And we are sitting around spending more time judging them, acting better than them, doing all of the stuff that, 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 that puts this negative taste, this bad taste in people's mouths, which makes it impossible for us to evangelize in the first place. Then they realize that a bunch of stuff that's been, 90% of stuff we pushing on people isn't even doctrine. It's the development of cultural, religious, uh, iconic <coughs> um, standards that actually have no real, true, intrinsic value in the development of people who can sustain themselves, who can carry on a godly life. A godly life is a life of service. A godly life is a life of empowerment and empowering others. It's not how you dress. It's not how many times you go to church. It's not how well you quote scripture. It's not how good your vocals are in choir. It's not how well you can play the organ. It's none of those things. It's not how much you can hoop behind the pulpit. It's how many lives are you changing for the better? How many people can look at you and see the reflection of God in your life and sit up and say, I want to get close enough to this God so God can do that kind of transformation in my life? Or are people looking at you and going, say, oh my God, these are some of the most obnoxious people on the planet. They're some of the most judgmental people on the planet. Is that what people are saying about you? Again, this isn't about not having standards. There's nothing wrong with having standards. I am a person for standards. Every day, I'm fighting to raise the standards by which I live my life, but it does not give me a pathway or a platform to sit down and tear other people down, judge other people, and try to destroy other people because they don't fit inside the box that I've created for myself. That's not what this is about. Faith in God is about being a reflection of God. Living a life of godliness is about people should be able to look at you in your good times, in your bad times, in your struggles, in your triumphs, and see the power of God functioning in your life to where you have such balance that it's hard to see the difference between the darkness and the light moving through your life because you have this confidence about yourself. And this confidence flows through the love that you share with other people not the judgment. I would love to see the same level of energy applied to all, all of the children that I deal with from childhood sexual abuse, the women that I deal with from childhood sexual abuse, the young black men who are struggling with their identity that I deal with on a regular basis. I would love to see you angry about what this government is doing to us and stop falling for the okie doke playing this two-party system bullcrap that's not producing anything for us and has not for as long as we can look back and remember. So again, 
I am just totally flabbergasted at the fact that we can have that much energy. We can put that. I'm, I'm going to tell you something, then I'm done. 95% of us don't even need to be on social media. Which then eliminates the other, the reason for the other five being on. Because if I wasn't trying to reach my people, I wasn't trying to promote my business. I wouldn't be on social media. You know why? Social media has been the mo one of the most destructive instruments in, in, in disruption in the black community. It constantly promotes dissension and a gender war between black women and black men. It, it forces us to pick up things that don't belong to us, hate, hatred for things that don't have anything to do for us, fighting about things that we don't even experience. You got a bunch of people out there carrying torches about stuff they've never actually been through themselves, but social media has told us this is what they're doing. Now, the same thing, you can't find social media telling you what this group is doing to you that's outside of your community, but it can sure tell black men what, what black women are doing wrong. You sure tell black women what black men are doing wrong and nobody's looking at all the things that we're doing right because that's not being pushed. All the stuff that we get thrust upon us is stuff that triggers us to turn on one another. Have we ever questioned that that might actually be a plan and a strategy? We've got work to do. And my thing is I look up and I look at every day and I'm just overwhelmed. I'm literally got emails in my inbox today that like for the first time and I don't know how long I just looked at it I could not respond to because it's constant I got this going on this is happening in my life this is going on with my son this is going on with my daughter this is going on with my marriage this is going on and it's issues that need to be confronted because we are not dealing with the source we are raising up broken people that are hurting people and we actually have the ability and the capacity to change it we got I, i'm constantly dealing with juvenile court because got a bunch of young black males that don't have a sense of identity don't have a sense of purse fighting and frustrated because pops isn't there either pops is in prison or pops done broke out with some other chick pops done decided since i can't have mom i want anything to do with you and i'm not saying that's the totality of the black man because the vast majority of black men hold it down studies reveal that the black man is the most involved in their children's life the problem is the ones that aren't getting dad are the ones that are tearing up the community and we don't have the room to have that many young black males not be okay we need every black male on deck we need them whole we need them healthy we need them strong and we're losing our daughters too we, 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 we we've got a lot of work to do so on that note look i'm gonna get ready to get out. I, I'm, I'm just like but well, we really this is where we at right all right but as i said in the beginning if you like what you heard probably won't get a lot probably get a lot of, you know and, and by now you have to know I'm not here for the likes anyway. I'm not here to be popular. I'm not here to, to have a million followers, but I'm here to speak the truth. And the truth is definitely something we're not interested in hearing. The truth is not what we want to support. Uh, the truth is not something we want to report uh, support. We want to hear the things that make us feel good. We want to hear the things that make us uh, confirm that everything's cool, nothing, nothing's really, I don't have to be accountable, I don't have to be responsible, I don't have to change anything, everything's cool. No, we're in a messed up situation. We won't rally, we won't get on code, we won't support the things that will make things better for the future. We keep sending our children, generation after generation, out into a world unprepared, un, unsettled, unsure of themselves, because we don't wanna get off the rocker and actually put in some work actually get behind programs that work actually be boots on the ground actually sit up and say i'm not going to sit up and be taken uh for a ride anymore by this by, by this government by the uh by corporate america by all these different things that are playing us like a ukulele it's time to change damn it but we we'll we, we'll go hard in the paint against a pastor and his wife because we don't like the way she dresses. Really? We don't like the hell? So you can rape a child, but just don't put the wrong damn dress on. You can over refer young black boys to special education referrals despite the fact they don't really need it as long as you wear the right dress. You can be a, a, a white man who is constantly stuck into the black community 
but as long as you're a Democrat, our boys are so brilliant, so wanting to love, as hard as they seem, as evil as you want to make them to be. I deal with these kids. They want to be loved and they want to love. But you have to build that. You have to give them a space for that. You have to teach them that. And we're not doing it. We fell in the hell out of them. We're too busy caught up in ourselves, standing on grand platforms, worried about what somebody wearing. Oh, man. On that note, look, I'm out of here. If you believe in what I'm doing, show some love, show some support. Probably going to subscribe. Normally, it's after these that I get the large drop in subscription as if I give a damn. I'm not here to be your friend. If you want to be my friend, come work with me. Put boots on the ground. Get behind the work. Let's go out and and, and let's give life everything we have for the future of our children. We can, we can become friends with that. Uh, being popular, been doing that shit since high school. Don't pay nothing. Don't do nothing. Don't don't give you. It don't. It doesn't build a legacy. It gives you a false sense of security. A bunch. Of, I, I could care less about being popular. I could care less about being liked. What I want is people to look at me and say, I might not like that fool, but he gonna say the truth. He's gonna give it to you. You're gonna be able to verify it. You're gonna be able to read it. His research is on point. His writing is on point. His lectures on point. His work cannot be questioned. I put in the work. So on that note, look, I'm out of here. Guys, y'all do what y'all do. Talk to you later.